is right that I, a woman black, should speak of white womanhood. My husbands, my fathers, my brothers, my sons die for it because of it. And their blood, chilled in electric chairs, stopped by hangman's noose, cooked by lynch mobs, fires spilled by white supremacists' desire to kill for profit, gives me that right. I would that I could speak of white womanhood as it will and should be when it stands tall in full equality, but then womanhood will be womanhood, void of color and class. And all necessity for my speaking thus will be past. Gladly past. But now, since it is deemed a thing apart, supreme, I must, in searching honest report, how it seems to me. White womanhood stands in bloodied skirt and in slavery, reaching out adulterous hands, killing mine and crushing me. What then is this superior thing that in order to be sustained must needs feed upon my flesh? How came this horror to be? Let's look to history. They said, the white supremacists said, that you were better than me, that your fair brow would never know the sweat of slavery. They lied. White womanhood too is enslaved. The difference is degree. They brought you here willing slaves to man. You, shiploads of women, each filled with hope that she might win with ruby lip and saucy curl and bright flashing eye. Him, to wife who had the largest tender. Remember? My sisters, there is no room for mockery. If they count it my teeth, they did appraise your thigh. Sold you to the highest bidder the same as I. And you did not fight for your right to choose whom you would wed. But whatever bartered price that was the legal tender, you were sold to a stranger's bed in a stranger land. Remember? And, and you did, did not fight. fight. Mind you, I speak not mockingly, but I fought for freedom. We are women, all. And what wrongs you, murders me, eventually marks your grave. So, we share a mutual death at the hands of tyranny. They trapped me with the chain, the gun. They trapped you with lying tongue. For lest you see that fault, that villainy, that robbed you of name, voice, and authority, that murderous greed that wasted you and me. He, the white supremacist, fixed your minds with poisonous thought. White, white, white skin, skin is supreme. supreme. And you did not fight, but set your minds fast on my slavery, the better to endure your own. My pearls were beads of sweat wrung from weary bodies' pain. Instead of rings upon my hand, I wore swollen, bursting veins. My ornaments were the whiplash scar. My diamonds, perhaps a tear. Instead of paint and powder on my face, I wore a mask of fear. To see my blood spilled so. And you, women, Seeing spoke no protest, but cuddled down in your pink slavery and thought somehow my wasted blood confirmed your superiority. Because your necklace was of gold, you did not notice that it throttled speech. Because diamond rings bedecked your hands, you did not regret their dictated idleness. Nor could you see that the platinum bracelets which graced your wrists were chains binding you fast to economic slavery. And though you claimed your husband's name, still could not command his fidelity. You bore him sons. I, I bore him sons. sons. No, 
not willingly. He purchased you. He raped me. I fought, but you fought neither for yourselves nor me. Set trapped in your superiority and spoke no reproach, consoled your outrage with an added brooch. Oh God, how great is a woman's fear who for a stone, a cold, cold stone would not defend honor, love, nor dignity. You bore the shaming mockery of your marriage and heaped your hate on me, a woman too a slave more so. And when your husband disowned his seed that was my son and sold him apart from me, you felt avenged. Understand, I was not your enemy in this. I was not the source of your distress. You were afraid to nurse your young, lest fallen breast offend your master's sight. So you pass them, your children, on to me. Flesh that was your flesh, blood that was your blood, drank the sustenance of life from me. And as I gave suck, I knew I nursed my own child's enemy. I could have lied, told you your child was fed till it died of hunger. but I could not find the heart to kill the orphaned innocence. For as it fed, it smiled, burped, and gurgled with content. As for color, it knew no difference. Yes, in that while, I kept your sons and daughters alive. But when they grew strong in blood and bone that was of my milk, you taught them to hate me. You gave them the words, mammy and nigger. So that strength that was of myself turned and spat on me, despoiled my daughters and killed my sons. You know I speak. When you made your big push for freedom, my sons fought at your son's side. My husband's brothers too fell in that battle where Crispus Attucks died. And when I bestirred myself for freedom and brave Harriet led the way, some of you found hard, played a part in aiding my escape. It is unfortunate that you acted not in the way of justice. You hated slavery, yet abhorred equality. I would that the poor among you could have seen through the scheme and joined hands with me. Then we, being the majority, could long ago have rescued our wasted lives. But no, the rich becoming richer could be content, while yet the poor had only pretense and sought through murderous brutality to convince themselves that what was false was true. So with the KKK and fiery cross and bloody appetites set about to prove that white is right, forgetting their poverty. Thus the white supremacist used your skins to perpetuate your slavery and woe to me. Woe to the boy Emmett Till. And woe to you. What, what will you, you do? do? Will you fight with me? White supremacy is your enemy and mine. So be careful when you talk with me. Remind me not of my slavery. I know it well, but rather tell me of your own. Remember, you've never known me. You've been seeing me as white supremacy would have me be but I will be myself. 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 
But I will be myself. But I will be myself. But I will be myself. But I will be myself. But I will be myself. But I will be myself. But I will be myself. Free! Free.